Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and you're watching from JS to Remote Sensing. In this tutorial, we're going to perform a supervised classification of a Sentinel-2 image using the same automatic classification plugin. In particular, we're going to perform a clustering using the ISO data algorithm. Of course, the same method could be applied to any multispectral image. So please remember to always update the plugin to the latest version available. So here in the QJS interface, we go in the SCP menu, the preprocessing menu, and select the Sentinel-2 tab. Here we have the Sentinel-2 conversion tool, and we select with this button here the directory containing the Sentinel-2 bands. Here, in this case, the Sentinel-2 sample, which is previously downloaded, and we select it and as you can see here the table is filled with the name of the bands of the sentinel 2 bands we should check this option here create band set and use band set tools and then we click run to start the conversion process we create a new directory for converted bands here click ok and so the conversion process will start as you can see here, the progress bar. And so when the conversion is completed, we can see here the Sentinel-2 bands loaded in the QJS map. Here we can see the converted bands. And also if we come back to the SCP Bands a tool here. We can see that the Sentinel 2 bands converted to reflectance are already loaded in this Bands 2 with the center wavelength already defined according to the Sentinel 2 bands here. So we can remove this Bands 1, which is empty. Click here, close tab. And yes, so we have this uh, Benset 1, which is uh, the input for clustering in the next step. So now that we have the Benset 1 defined, we can go here to band processing, clustering, here the clustering tool. This is the interface of the clustering tool. Here we select the input band set, which is the band set 1. We select here the ISO data method for clustering. And here we set the distance threshold, which is used by ISO data for merging signatures. We set the value of 0 0.01. And we set here a number of classes of 10, which will be the classes identified by the ISO data. We set here the maximum number of iterations here, we can set here 10. Of course, these parameters can be defined according to your test or your study area and find the optimal values for these parameters. We set here the ISO data maximum standard deviation as value 0.2, the ISO data minimum class size in pixels here in 10. And here we can select uh, the criteria uh, about the creation of seed signatures, which uh, are the starting signatures for the clustering process here. In this case, we'll use the use random seed signatures. So uh, random seeds are selected in the image. As distance algorithm, we can choose between minimum distance and spectral angle mapping. So we select the minimum distance. And we could also save the resulting signatures to signature list, but we can leave this unchecked in, in this uh, tutorial. And then we click Run to start the clustering process. Here we set the name of the output classification, distance clustering, and click Save. And so the process, the clustering process, will start here, as you can see the progress bar. After uh, all the iterations, here we have the result of clustering, here are the 10 classes. As you can see here, the result of the classification. 
And of course, we also have here in the output interface, we have the mean spectral signature for each learning cover class, which is, of course, the result of clustering. So now that we have the classification here, we should define and set the corresponding land cover class. So now we should perform a photo interpretation. And we can use here this Benson one to create a color composite, a RGB color composite, in order to identify each land cover class and the related ISO data class. So here, this is a network color composite. We can change here in the RGB tool the color composite we can set here, for instance, this false color composite 732, which corresponds to the near infrared, the red, and the green bands. And if we click with the identify tool of QJS here or the classification, you can see here the class 5, for instance, of this pixel, which uh, belongs to vegetation class. You can see here in red in this color composite. This other class here with class one, as you can see here, is more related to their soil. And so we go on clicking and identifying every class of the ISO data classification, identify the corresponding land cover class. So when we have completed the identification process of every land cover class, we go here to post processing, reclassification. Here, we click refresh and select the clustering classification. Here, you can click this button here to calculate unique values. As you can see, the table is filled with the old value, which is the classification, and we can simply change the new value, which is our land cover classification system. So we can set here, for instance, 3 for the class 1, 2 for the class 2, the ISO data classification, and so on. Of course, in your results, the, the numbers could vary because of the results, of course, being a supervised classification, the class values could be different in your case. Then we click Run, and we set here the output name, for instance, reclassified. Here. And so here, uh, you can see the reclassified raster. We can, of course, uh, set the symbology here, properties. You can set here unique values. Uh, we, of course, need to classify all the values and, of course, change the colors according to our needs. So, zero, which is unclassified. You can set, for instance, this color blue for the class one, water. You can set another color for the class uh, built up here, for instance, red. and a different color, for instance, green for vegetation here, class three. And yellow for bare soil, class four. So now we click OK. As you can see, this is the result of the unsupervised classification reclassified to our land cover classes. And here you can see there are several classification errors. For instance, these red areas, which should be uh, urban area, but uh, actually they are bare soil. You can see vegetation is classified pretty good. Of course, this is uh, an unsupervised classification, so it depends on the parameters and our needs. We should uh, probably repeat the classification and maybe change the parameters to get better results. And we can see here urban area classified correctly.
So now that we have a link our classification, we can see there are uh, several errors and maybe we could uh, enhance the classification removing uh, isolated pixels. As you can see here, there are uh, several isolated pixels. Uh, for instance here, could be uh, classification errors. So we can use uh, post-processing tools to enhance the classification, for instance removing these isolated pixels and create a cleaner classification. So here in the SAP menu, post-processing, the classification CF tool here. I click here the refresh to uh, refresh the list of the single band rasters. Here we select uh, reclassified. We set here the size threshold. So we set here two for removing uh, only isolated pixels. And we set uh, eight as pixel connections in order to remove uh, isolated pixels, also considering uh, uh, diagonal pixels. Then we click run and save the output file, for instance, save. And we can see here the result. You can see uh, we have removed isolated pixels. Of course, we could also use uh, other post processing tools for refining the classification. So we have performed uh, the unsupervised classification of a Sentinel-2 image that can be a good starting point for assessing and analyzing the spectral signatures of Lencore. For any comments or questions, please join the Facebook group of the Semi-Automatic Classification plugin. Thank you for watching. Thank you.